Hi, I'm Eileen Webb and president of Accreditation Preparation. And I'm here to share with you some things I've learned over the years about ABET accreditation. I've been an ABET program evaluator as a volunteer for a long time, and I've been on 18 visits. I've also been a consultant working with over 100 programs at over 40 universities since 2012. So I've spent a lot of time learning about this, but I got to tell you, I didn't start out um, as an expert. In fact, I found it pretty confusing and a little bit frustrating. I well remember when I was a brand new program evaluator and I was reading my very first self-study. I read through it, took me a few hours and my impression was, this is great. I'm very impressed. And then I picked up the form I needed to fill out and realized that I had a lot of work to do. I ended up going back through it section by section, first reading the requirements document, then the form, then the section, and sometimes even having to send some emails to the program for things that I didn't quite understand. And it took me probably 30 or 40 hours. Now that I've been doing it a while, it doesn't take me nearly as long because I understand the requirements and the changes that have occurred over time. Um, but there's always something new. What I'd like to do today is to share with you the top three ABET shortcomings, because I think that you'll find that these are the things that impact you most or occur most frequently. So the first one is continuous improvement. And this is the area where whether you're a brand new program or you've been doing this for 50 years, you spend the most time and effort. Uh, ABAT has a list of things that you have to measure relative to student outcomes. And if you've heard the word rubrics, this is where it fits. Rubrics are always preferred as a method for measuring student performance. Although there are places where grades are okay. And you have to look at your data, make decisions about it and use it to improve the program. The second one is curriculum problems. These impact new programs or new to ABET programs most often. ABET requires um, minimum requirements on curriculum, uh, including usually math and science and then technical topics. And engineering also has some very specific things they're looking for in a major design experience. And there's often usually a program criteria based on the name of the program. So if even one of your graduates doesn't meet all of the curriculum requirements, then a new program will not be accredited. And while there is an opportunity to fix problems between the visit at the end of the year and the voting the next summer, not all curriculum problems can be solved during that time period. So that's why this one is the most common reason. The third one impacts renewing programs. And I call it the ABET sabbatical, although you'll never find those words in any ABET document. What happens is you had a great review and you think, now we can get back to doing all the things that we put off because we've been doing ABET accreditation. Or maybe your ABET expert who's been taking care of everything that leaves to go to greener pastures. And then it's a year and a half, two years before your visit and you say, we need to start doing ABET again, get ready. And you've got a gap. And that gap is your ABET sabbatical. So now you might be wondering if you're on track. I'd like to invite you to come to my session, demystifying ABET accreditation here at the LACSE conference. 
And if you can't come, or if after the conference you discovered that you have questions um, that you didn't have before, please get, get in touch with me. I'd love to talk. Thanks for coming.